Hi everyone, you're probably wondering what this video is. I'm here to convert you into the magic of the X79 platform. Holy crap, I wish somebody told me about this earlier. The 1650V2 Xeon is the chip that we're looking at today. And it is the little Xeon that could. It is the $35 Ryzen 2600. This is an absolute steal in a market right now where it's hard to get anything for a reasonable price. Now, there are some downsides to this chip which I want to talk about. One of the things is you're stuck on Ivy Bridge forever. You're, you're stuck on this platform forever. So you're buying this, performance is only going to degrade over time, especially in 2022. But... If you're on a tight budget and you just need something now and you can't wait, this might be for you. This retailed for $583 when it was new back in 2013 and this was a server processor. It has 6 cores, 12 threads, maximum turbo frequency of 3.9 gigahertz and base frequency of 3.5 gigahertz so it's pretty fast it's uh, especially for a server processor a lot of these are in the 2 gigahertz ranges so this is a fast little 6 core and it's got 12 megabytes of cache as well which is going to be very important it does have 130 watt TDP so you're going to want to put a nice cooler on it it is on DDR3 which is two generations dated technically by now but you are running in quad channel memory so your memory bandwidth is going to be similar to dual channel DDR4 and this supports PCI Express 3.0 4, 8, 16 configuration by lane don't let your processor get over 70 degrees Celsius And this does have Intel AVX, however, does not have AVX2. But that's not going to impact most games, really. Not having AVX2 is not going to affect most of this, most of the performance that you're going to get out of this machine. So I come over here on YouTube, and you just type in E51650V2, and you could see there are so many videos. On this on this chip with different configurations, you know GTX 1060. Um, some person did a uh, Dawid did a 48 gigabyte beast uh, Xeon build dual Xeon chipset, and there are other uh, chipsets as well and processors that you can look at uh, as well on the X79 and X99 platforms, which is just that is an absolute. Um, it's just absolutely amazing. I was able to get motherboard, processor, 32 gigs of RAM for $120. I had to wait for a month and a half for the motherboard to get here, but that is insane. I did try overclocking, and it's not stable. I was able to get the memory up to 1600 megahertz and the processor up to 4.1 gigahertz but it crashes blue screens freezes I did undo the memory clock and then bumped it down to 3.9 gigahertz uh, for the all core overclock and it was still it was a lot more stable than it was but it was still crashing programs occasionally it wasn't freezing or throwing blue screens but it was enough to be a nuisance so I just reverted everything back to to stock and let the turbo boost manager handle it and so far it's doing a pretty good job um, to be fair I did buy an $80 Chinesium board so if you're gonna look into overclocking you need to make sure you have a good motherboard that has a voltage control on it this board can only you can only set the multiplier you can't up the voltage I guarantee you you can probably get over 4 gigahertz if you give it a shitload of voltage but then that they kind of introduced the problem of is it worth it at that point? Because are you going to put a $100 cooler on a $30 processor, $35 processor? Probably not. So, um, but it's got a lot of modern instruction sets that most games will use, minus AVX2. And 
benchmark here, it basically matches a 2600. Looking at a benchmark here, there there are some things that are faster about a 2600 uh, that aren't. Uh, this has better memory latency, which doesn't really matter. Um, of course, this is going to have way more market share um, because it's just a modern consumer part than the uh, Xeon will. And they bench uh, within the margin of error. That's within a percent and a half. I'm going to consider that basically equal at that point. And you look on eBay, they are $35 all day long on eBay. Some of them are a little bit more pricier, like here. But you can get these for 35 bucks on eBay all day in January 2022. So that is insane. Um, that is absolutely insane that you're getting a 2600 for 30 bucks. Essentially. Yes, you forfeit an upgrade path, but the performance is there. And I tested this game, uh, or I tested this processor in several games. I tested it in Cyberpunk. I tested it in um, uh, Halo Infinite. And I also tested it in Splitgate. The reason I wanted to include those three games is because that will give us a good range of kind of like intense, medium, and easy. And to see kind of where the processor sits and lies. Um, I might include might not I haven't decided yet because uh, it takes 30 years to install I might run a Microsoft Flight Simulator benchmark on it uh, and just see what it runs in Microsoft Flight Simulator but it, it did pretty well in Cyberpunk so I'd imagine this processor is going to do quite well in Microsoft Flight Simulator you're going to have plus 30 FPS experience the whole time so this might just be the best processor for money and uh now, uh, let's go ahead and go on to the benchmarks, and we'll talk kind of like FPS, 1% lows, kind of what to look out for. All right, let's take a look here. So we're looking at Cyberpunk 2077. Let me pull up the frame times chart for this. So this got a 77 average FPS. This is at 1080p, 105 max, and the 1% lows were 48. And uh, as you can see here, there's some spiking going on, but it's a fairly smooth line for the most part. There's the really, I like to start from V's apartment because it's a very demanding area, like the uh, cul-de-sac or a turnaround point, roundabout, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's a pretty demanding area. That's like the worst case scenario. And then if, if you, that's like the worst performance you're going to get out of this game, everywhere else will be fine. Um... And so, you can see here we're at 1080p optimized settings. Um, we're at 1080p high uh, with a couple th with crowd density turned down to low, and a couple other things changed. Um, chromatic aberration is turned off. Uh, depth of field is turned off, and a couple of other settings that really tank frames with no benefit. We also have um, DLSS is disabled. It's off right now, so there's no DLSS going on. And you can see some areas, DLSS would actually help quite a bit if we enabled it, um, especially around the city um, with our average. But I wanted to get a real, you know, what's a native 1080p going to run this game at? DLSS is kind of a magic switch for me. I can't tell the difference between it on quality and native uh, so I, that's what I would do if you're uh, blind like me. Some people could tell the difference, but I can't. I'm going to go ahead and shut up for the rest of this and then kind of just let the rest of this uh, play through.
Alright, going into Halo Infinite here, you can see how bad I am at first person shooters. I'm terrible, especially at Halo. God, I suck at Halo. Halo 3, Halo Reach, Halo 4, even Halo 1 and 2. I suck at all Halos. Okay, and this is no different. <laughs> so, uh, you, you could see my rear handed to me several times. On this, we actually got 128 FPS average uh, on this map. And we got 73 for the 1% lows. I had to start recording in the middle of the match, so that the 1% lows are going to take a little bit to even out. And I like to wait till the end of the match, because sometimes the average FPS will go down as well. So I'd want to get a, kind of a true sense. But this is basically the performance you're going to get. We are running at 1080p low. The reason is because it's likely you're going to be running this game at 120 frames per second. You're going to want to make sure your processor bound and not graphics card bound and you can see right here we are kind of basically balanced actually on both uh, looking at CPU utilization and looking at GPU utilization we're pretty balanced I would probably play this at 60 FPS uh, but I'm not competitive so yeah it's 120 FPS experience 1080p low uh, preset and uh, it's really smooth and playable I just suck <laughs> I suck a lot, so I'll go ahead and shut up and let the rest of this uh, go through, and then we'll talk when Splitgate comes around. Alright, this is Splitgate. This is one of actually my favorite uh, first-person shooters. And this game is really easy to run. This will run on your mom's quad core, uh, uh, core, two do, uh, core 2 quad. So, this is, uh, this is a really easy game to run. I don't actually know if it will run on a Core 2 quad. I haven't tested that. But, uh, this is really almost a 240 hertz experience. Um... And we're running 1080p epic settings. So we're running max settings because this game is just really easy on processors to run. I mean, there's, there's, you could get maybe 20, 30 more frames if you turned it down to low and made it really CPU bound. But um, this is easily 120 FPS, 144 hertz experience. Uh, our 1% lows were seven our maximum was 200 uh yeah uh, 2863 frames per second i don't know how that happened but that's awesome i'll take it uh and our average was about 219 fps so uh easily a 144 hertz experience uh on maximum settings in this game and this is kind of this is definitely the easy to run you know kind of generic indie or esports games you'll be running into a lot and uh, Halo Infinite is a more modern take it'll if you can get Halo Infinite running pretty good you'll probably have COD Warzone will run pretty good Battlefield 2042 will probably run okay so um, I'll go ahead and just let this finish out and uh, we'll wrap up at the end here Five minutes remaining.
thank you to everyone who made it this far in the video. I had to change microphones last minute. I'm going to sound like a robot. This one's got some issues. Sorry about that. Nothing I could do. But um, would I recommend the 1650 V2 in 2022? Is it worth getting? That really depends on your use case. If you need immediate performance today for a mid-range system, it will absolutely deliver. Um, but if you're looking for tomorrow's uh, needs, it's going to fall flat on its face, to be frank. But for $30 to $135, uh, I can't beat it. I mean, there's not a better option out there for the price, uh, I would say. Uh, yes, you sacrifice an upgrade path, but if you need immediate performance right now and can't wait, you can find an X79 board, like a HP a Z420 workstation board, I think, uh, was one that I saw, and some Dell Percet Power Edge uh, boards and precision boards that uh, were uh, X79, and there's still some uh, in circulation like Asus and third-party manufacturers and resellers that have those old X79 boards that will be compatible with this chip. But uh, thanks for again for making it so far, and leave a like if you liked it. Have a good one. Hope to see you in the next one.